Hello and Happy New Year. I am filming this on New Year's Eve, which reminds me that I was going to make myself some tea <laughs> so that I could be like, I hope you have something warm or nice that you like to drink. So hold on, I'll be right back with tea. Okay, I'm back. I have some tea. I also put on a jacket shirt because it is cold. Um, anyway, hi, my name is India. I use she, they pronouns. I'm an educator, I'm an artist, and the videos I make and post are mostly about reading or knitting. And I think that's as much of an intro as I need. So today I'm gonna talk to you briefly about, I guess my reading plans, but mostly about this bingo board that I created for myself as an incentive, but also as a way for me to check in on what I want to be reading, what I um, find important in my like reading trends. That sounds more like a statistic-y thing, but I think this is more just um, continuing on the line of I have so many books. I have about 287 books on my TBR right now. And every year I try different ways to reduce it and it just hasn't been that successful. So I'm trying to approach it differently in a way that's kind of a game. I love reading challenges that have bingo boards. I find them really fun and satisfying and exciting. Um, so yeah, this is mine. I think it's really cute. Before I go into all of the prompts that I've made for myself. Um, my main incentives here are if I get a bingo, if I get five in a row, I get to go out and acquire a second hand book. If I get a full blackout, so if I get all of the spaces, um, I get to go out and acquire a new book, maybe even like keeping my eye out for a new 2023 release book so that it is something that I'm like, oh, this is really exciting. I'm going to think about this book as what I will get for myself when I complete all of these challenges. These are slightly color coordinated, but in a way that doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense. Um, so we're just gonna go across. So first up, we have the new author space. I have a lot of books by authors who I've never read from, um, like or finished an entire book of. I wanna use this space as a way to read from authors who, again, I have multiple books from, but haven't read anything. So like A.S. Byatt, or um, Zadie Smith or Angela Y. Davis. These are authors who I clearly want to read, but just haven't. I then have the pre-19th century space. Um, this just feels more specific than read a classic um, because I have a lot of books written from a lot of different time periods. And so I just would like to read something before the 19th century. This space, all my green spaces are like specific books. So um, this is to read Spring by Allie Smith. Last year I wanted, or like last winter, I wanted to read the seasonal quartet all in consecutive seasons. And I got through, uh, oh, last autumn. So I read, I reread autumn, I read winter, and then did not read spring. So I'd like to read spring in springtime. I would like to read a book of short stories. Again, this is another thing that I have quite a few books of short stories on my TBR um, that I just would like to prioritize. So whether this is a book of short stories by um, by Jhumpa Lahiri, who I adore um, and who I've already read short stories from, like that would be great. Or just another book of short stories. And then the last space on this row is the science fiction spot. I am really curious about science fiction. Um, I have quite a bit of it 
and it's something that I just want to continue to expand my reading genre wise while always keeping in mind the other ways that I can expand my reading but um this is a lot clearer so I want to read one of my science fiction books looking at the next space I have a lot of memoirs and I don't tend to prioritize memoirs because I am a little bit of a scaredy cat just because I'm very sensitive very emotional um, and memoirs when done really well can evoke both positive and negative feelings within me so um I have a few memoirs that I want to read some I feel like will impact me more than others and I just want to read one of my memoirs next I have this spot that says grandpa <laughs> um, my grandpa and I read books um, together from, a, from time to time. Um, he lives in Idaho, I'm here in Portland. Um, and so we read books and we call and talk about them. Last year we read The Overstory together, which was fantastic. We also read The Nickel Boys and um, Just Mercy together. So this is just a space that I can check off if I read a book with my grandpa. Historical fiction. Um, I don't know why I'm like sporadically telling you what these colors mean, but blue or this like tealy color is for um, specific genres, so like sci-fi, memoir, historical fiction. Um, I love historical fiction. It is one of those genres that just feels very calming um, and like kind of nostalgic. I read a lot of historical fiction um, when I was in school, like as a kid and a teenager and so um yeah i just want to read more historical fiction i tend to be put off by it because it can seem really dense and sometimes they're really long like this big book is historical fiction but i want to read them i want to be blown away into another time this next space is i would like to read a book in one day so that might just be like I pick up a really short book and I read it all in one day or I challenge myself a little bit more and I start reading really early until really late I don't know this is just something that I would like to challenge myself with because reading was not a priority for me last year and that's completely fine but I want to remind myself that I like reading next space is another specific book it's the waves by virginia wolf i just want to read this book because virginia wolf is one of my favorite authors and yeah i want to read it next a book that is over 500 pages i have a lot of big books they scare me they don't need to scare me they're just books it's just pages um but yeah i would like to you know specifically look at some of my books over 500 pages to read. We get to a pink space, which is my like specific author or like type of author space. I would like to read um, another book from Jeanette Winterson. Jeanette Winterson is one of my favorite authors. I find her writing style very um, like melody with my brain um, and really reminiscent of like Wolf's writing style and I have two of Jeanette Winterson's books I have Sexing the Cherry and oh no I have three Sexing the Cherry um The Passion and her memoir I forgot to mention another like one rule I have for myself is I can't double up um prompts or like bingo spaces like if I was doing this for a reading challenge I would try to double up so I'd be like oh I could read a memoir by Jeanette Winterson with my grandpa boom three done um I want these to be individual books we then get to the free space which I realize having said that is maybe a silly space but yeah you read a book first book I read if it doesn't fit any of these prompts boom free space done I don't know why I'm snapping everywhere I'm gonna stop 
Okay, next book um, is a reread. I want to reread a book. This doesn't help me with any like TBR, but this could be an Austen book. Um, I found that reading Jane Austen um, novels has been really helpful and positive for my mental health. <laughs> Um, my reread of Pride and Prejudice this year was like one of the best things that I did for my brain. Um, so yeah, just like I want to continue being nice to my brain. I also have a lot of my childhood like favorites that um, would be nice to reread or just like graphic novels that are cute. Um, so this reread space is kind of a way for me to prioritize like reading nicely to myself. Then I have the random spot. Um, oh, this is still too hot. But I want to use like a random way of selecting my book, whether that is um, a random number generator or like I randomly choose an author or a genre and then like pick a couple books and randomly choose from there. So yeah, that's just like a fun little way and might be good if I'm like I don't know what to read so I can just read something at random. Buddy read! So this is the next row. Yeah. Um, I love reading books with friends. Uh, my friend Charlotte and I have read books together. My friend Sally and I kind of read a book together. We had the intention of reading a book together but then I failed because I was not reading it. The next one is a dense nonfiction. So I want to choose one of my nonfiction books that's dense or feels like a heavy or um, difficult topic to read. So this could be like a, like it's really thick. Um, I have a couple of like just thicker nonfiction books or it could be a um, book that I know is written very academically. So I have a book about the history of um, birth control and the IUD and racist practices in our medical history um, that I know is just gonna take a little bit more brain power for me. So again, I'm pushing myself to read books that I think might take a little bit more effort on my end, but that I just need to like, get over it and read them. This space, so I want to vlog a book that I read. This is crooked. I don't care at this point. Um, I'd like to have a reading vlog where I'm reading, focusing on reading one book. Um, I find these really fun and sometimes the best way for me to capture what I'm thinking, hey, you, what I'm thinking about a specific book. So, um, I don't know, I think this is one that I can also think about of like what type of book will be really, um, might have a good outcome of me reading it and filming my reaction. What type of book do I want to film my reaction to? Next, I have another new author space. Again, this is something that's important to me. I'm going to get my cat. The space after that is my phone a friend space. So this is another thing of how I choose a book. So this is, I'm gonna hit up a friend, whether it's like <laughs> a friend or like a family member or my boyfriend and ask them to choose a book for me to read. Okay, last row, we have another author. So this is Thomas Hardy. I read Tessa the Ubervilles when I was in high school, my senior year of high school. And I did a present, like that was my, like senior paper was about Tessa the Ubervilles, and I thought it was so good and so interesting and I have so many books by Thomas Hardy like four or five and so I just, <laughs> just want to read one of them I just want to read another one that's all um I want to read a book of poetry I have a lot of poetry over there we have another um like second uh, duplicate there we go um, reread again focusing on how are ways that I can um, be kind to my mind to my brain with my reading this year 
I'd like to read The Enchanted April by Elizabeth von Arnhem. This is a book I picked up last year specifically because it came up in every list that was like cozy, fun, heartwarming, um, like books for you to read. Um, this is about some ladies who go on vacation to like an Italian castle and it's supposed to just be like good. And then finally, I want to read a ballet book. I have a couple of ballet books here. I have Isadora, which is about Isadora Duncan. She, was she a ballet dancer or? She may have verged into other genres of dance, but I also have um, Nijinsky, a biography of Nijinsky. I have a lot of books about ballet because I did ballet as a child and a teen and it was a really big part of my life and I miss it being part of my life. I loved reading about dance stuff. So I have some books about ballet. I want to prioritize them. I want to read them. Thank you so much for uh, sticking through with this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you are going to make yourself a little bingo board. Maybe you don't need <laughs> something like this to incentivize you to read. I just noticed that I need to find creative ways to do, to get myself to do um, the things that I enjoy doing. Um, if I complete my bingo board like midway through the year, I'm going to make another one. And so there might be another video like this, but I'm also not pressuring myself. If it takes me the entire year to read you know like 25 books that's okay that's more books than i read this year um and that's fine this is just helping me approach my reading and like have specific intentions and play a little game so yeah i hope you have a good rest of your day and again happy new year um take care and i'll see you again another time